If you're battling with some insulin resistance or you're trying to improve insulin sensitivity or you're just trying to manage glucose levels, the time of day that you exercise is very important, but it's not just about sucking up the glucose out of the circulation. It's about timing your exercise along with your circadian clock genes properly. That sounds overly complicated and you probably wanna turn off this video, but I promise this is actually quite a simple video. And it's all breaking down the data from one particular study that was published in the journal Diabetologia in 2018 with some follow-up research that was done relatively recently. So we're gonna put it all together, it's very interesting. So let's go ahead and dive in. After this video, there is a link down below to save 20% off of Sun Warrior. They have a really cool new active protein line. I've been a fan of their Warrior Blend for a long time, but now they have their active protein line, which utilizes pumpkin protein and pea protein, which are two of my favorite proteins. But in addition to that, it also has enzymes to help out with that protein availability, but it also has some probiotics in it as well to just overall help support gut health. Now, in addition to that, there's some fiber in it, so you get a lot of satiety to it. So a really, really good protein powder for people that are looking for something that's gonna keep them satiated for a while, not just give them the amino acids that they need, but really provide them with that satiety and feeding the microbiome that we need to really just have overall just good gut integrity, but also satiety so we're not hungry throughout the day. So that link is down below, it's delicious. The chocolate is always my jam, but they have delicious vanilla as well. So that link down below to save 20% off your Sun Warrior Active Protein. So what this Diabetologia study did is it took a look at a couple of groups. It had one group of type two diabetics train using high intensity interval training in the morning at 8 a.m. And it had another group train at 4 p.m., okay? Then after two weeks, they took two weeks off and the group switched. The group that was in the afternoon now went in the morning and vice versa. Very interesting data that they found with this study. What they ultimately concluded is that the group that did high intensity interval training in the morning ended up having higher levels of glucose throughout the day above baseline and above the PM group. That's really wild. They found that the afternoon high intensity interval training group had lower levels of glucose throughout the day, more so than the morning group. In addition to this, the afternoon group had increased levels of thyroid stimulating hormone and increased levels of T4, which we'll talk about. So increased levels of thyroid activity, okay? Now the AM group had increased levels of TSH, but not T4, which we'll talk about again in a second. So does this mean that training in the morning is terrible for someone that is diabetic? Not necessarily. We need to understand some full context. So before I get into the circadian clock gene part, Let's talk about what could have gone on in this study first and foremost, because I don't want you to be deterred if you're someone that trains in the morning. I train in the morning, right? And at first I look at this and I'm thinking, oh shoot, I'm trying to manage my glucose. I gotta pay attention to this. One of the things we should pay attention to is this study was a real world study, which means that they were not controlling the time that they ate specifically. A lot of times when you ask people to do workouts in the morning, they will eat breakfast and then they will work out. And this very well could have been what was happening with this study, meaning that they ate breakfast, they would go do their HIIT workout, and it would delay gastric emptying because all the blood would leave their core and go to their extremities for the workout, and that ends up causing some elevated glucose later on throughout the day. There's a study that was published in Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism that found the opposite results of this Diabetologia study. What this study found was that high-intensity interval training that was done in the morning with type 2 diabetics dramatically improved glucose levels throughout the course of the day. The difference with this study was that they controlled the meal timing. So they were set to eat breakfast and then wait X amount of time before doing their high intensity interval training. And in that case, it did modulate glucose in a positive way. So the time that we eat in accordance with our workout plays a monumental role. But we have to look at something even more important if you ask me and that is our circadian clocks. Okay, exercise casts different benefits on our body when done at different times of the day. We have different circadian clock genes that are expressed during different times of the day. It's almost like we're a werewolf. At night we become something different than we are during the day. 
and at a genetic level, it really does happen because we have literal genes that are called clock genes, literally called CLOCK genes, as well as BMAL, PER1, these circadian clock genes. So there's a study published in the journal Nature that took a look at the relationship between circadian clocks and exercise. Exercise is what is known as a Zeitgeber. I think I'm pronouncing that right. But anyway, what that means is it influences the clocks within our muscles. Our skeletal muscle actually has clock genes inside of it. So when you alter these clock genes, it augments how the muscle responds to exercise. So your muscle will respond to exercise different in the morning than it will in the afternoon. Not necessarily for the better or for the worse. Interestingly enough, when you look at a lot of the records that are set and the performance data, people tend to perform better in the afternoon. Okay, but a lot of times you see more fatty acid oxidation in the morning. So what this tells us is that there's a difference between body composition effect and performance effect. Performance effect is largely correlated with the ability to utilize glucose rapidly, which would make sense from a diabetic standpoint. It would make sense that it would modulate glucose if we're better at sucking up glucose faster in the afternoon. From a body composition standpoint, you may be less efficient at sucking up glucose and have to rely a little bit more on fats in the morning too. Now, let's dive in a little bit deeper. In other studies, they've done what is called knockout, where they took mice and they knocked out specific genes. They basically made them, they rendered them useless or removed them, they knocked them out. They knocked out what is called uh, CRY1 and CRY2 genes, okay? And they found that when they knocked these particular circadian genes out, the mice were able to perform to a higher exercise capacity. They were able to push it further and harder. But then when they added muscle precursor cells from athletes, they found that it restored that rhythmic gene expression in the mice. So it restored that overall just natural circadian rhythmic gene expression. But when they added precursor cells from obese or diabetics, it did not have that effect. Okay, what this is ultimately telling us is that we have huge influential mechanisms at play depending on like how healthy we are and when we exercise. Circadian clocks ultimately do play a role in our metabolism and our exercise. What was really interesting though, if you start looking at more data, is you find that the mitochondria, okay, the energy powerhouse in our cells, they have more oxidative capacity at 11 p.m. than they do compared to 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. So as the day goes on, our mitochondria develop more ability to suck glucose out of the bloodstream, which further proves what I had mentioned before, or demonstrates it at least, that as the day goes on, our cells just get better at sucking up glucose out of the bloodstream, probably because there's glucose present during the day and they just become more efficient at it. So the later in the day that we do our cardio or we do our high intensity interval training, we have a more profound blood glucose modulation effect. Now, that probably can be confusing because you say, okay, I thought the training in the morning was really good, I thought all this. It might be one of these situations where you need to switch it up, okay? Training in the morning is really good to condition your body to utilize fat, which can be very, very good for giving yourself a break from glucose, right? But training in the afternoon can be very, very good for glucose tolerance and for sucking glucose out of the bloodstream and creating healthy patterns. Because remember, what we saw in that first Diabetologia study was that when you trained in the afternoon, you didn't just see a quick drop in glucose, you saw a drop in glucose and glucose clearance that remained, not forever, but all day, okay, regardless, right? So clearly there's an effect there. So I think there's a nice combination of a couple times per week doing high intensity interval training in the afternoon and then other times making it a morning habit always keeping your body sort of on its toes, but being able to exercise throughout different continuums and different circadian clock gene patterns. It's a huge thing that we need to pay attention to to condition our cells and our muscles to be well-rounded at utilizing glucose through all continuums. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.